Hi everybody. Today we're talking about how smart are rats and we'll be doing this by looking at cognitive math, metacognition, and empathy. So let's dive into what those words mean. Cognitive maps are mental representations of an external area. Metacognition is, is one's understanding of one's own mental capacity and empathy is the ability to share and understand another's emotions or feelings. Cognitive maps come with some evolutionary advantages. For example, if a rat knows the layout of an area, it can easily escape a predator and find a safe place to hide. If a rat has found a food source, they can return to it whenever they please. And rats build very elaborate tunnels. So the cognitive maps ensures that they don't get lost and that they reach a destination that they desire to go to. I know my rat definitely has a cognitive map of our house. Whatever room we put her in, she always ends up back in my room, which is where her cage is, which is where her food is. She knows where all the rooms are. She knows where she's going. She's got a cognitive map. So what scientists wanted to know was why are rats forming cognitive maps? Is it reward learning or operant learning? I mean, operant conditioning? That the rats have a goal, there's some incentive, there's a reward at the end, or is it latent learning? which is they're learning for the sake of it. They're active learners and there is no reward. So with this, a scientist named Edward C. Tolman conducted an experiment. And what he did is he built a maze and he put two groups of rats in them. The first group of rats had been in the maze before without a reward. The second group of rats had never been in the maze. So he put both groups of rats in the maze and compared what they did. The rats that had previously been in the maze before group one, he noticed that they had better scores, they made less errors, and they had a better time than the other rats. So what he concluded is that rats are indeed latent learners. But what he wanted to do next was discover what's the method, the learning strategies the rats are using. And with this, he had two theories. Place learning. The rats are using cues around the maze to figure out the way. Maybe they see a door and they know to go left or right. The other was response learning. The rats are simply going around using trial and error, and they're building a sequence of directions like left, right, right, left, that results in the end of the maze. And with this, he designed another experiment, and he had two groups of rats. The first group had many cues, but they weren't in the maze for a long time. The other group of rats had very little cues, but they were in the maze for a long time. And when he compared the two, he noticed that they received similar scores, they made the same amount of errors, around the same amount of errors, and they were both had about the same amount of time, it took about the same amount of time for the rats to reach the end of the maze. And what he concluded is that rats can use both learning strategies to figure out a beneficial path in the maze and build a cognitive map. Next up was metacognition. Metacognition, in a sense, is rats knowing what they don't know. And to figure out whether rats have metacognition, scientists designed an experiment. They gave the rats a sound duration test. It could last anywhere between two and eight seconds. If the rats also had the test, in the test, the rats had the choice to decline the test and settle with the three pellets, or the rats could take the test, and if they get it right, they get six pellets. If they get it wrong, though, they don't get any pellets. Whenever the sound was between two to three seconds, or seven to eight seconds, somewhere on the extreme end of the spectrum, the rats would usually accept the test because they were confident in their answer and they had a better chance of getting the six pellets and they'd get more reward. But when the test was between four and six seconds, the rats weren't as confident in their answer and they were at risk of getting no pellets, so they'd settle for three pellets. And I've seen metacognition in my own rat. I used to train her and I always knew she was confused and didn't understand because she'd run into the closet. And that's how I knew I needed to change strategy because she didn't understand. Finally, we come to empathy. Empathy is sharing emotions and part of that comes from the bonds rats form. That's a very social animals. I used to have two baby rats and they were very strongly bonded. They really loved each other. They'd spend a lot of time together. And what they noticed is that empathy comes from inclusive fitness, which is an animal who will Put itself at risk for the fitness of another animal and that's exactly what the rats are doing in this experiment there's an apparatus which has two chambers one is the water chamber and has the target rat the other is the dry chamber and has the observer rat 
separating them is a guillotine door. And in the dry chamber where the rat is, where the observer rat is, he has the choice. He can stay on the platform or he can go down into the water, release the chamber door and save the other rat in the drowning chamber or the water chamber. And what they found 80% of the time, the rats were indeed willing to go down and risk possible drowning so that they could save their little rat friend. Unfortunately, we are at the end of this presentation. I hope that you guys enjoyed it, and I hope that you might have learned something and maybe changed the way you view rats.